he has experience in the fields of cs legal compliance governance and sustainability in past he has also been part of ask group hdb financial services kotak mahindra bank capital first and loda group he is a commerce and law graduate from mumbai university holds masters in financial management from jamnalal bajaj institute of management from studies and is currently pursuing e masters in climate finance and sustainability from iit kanpur very interesting that a new course e masters in climate finance wonderful welcome mr rohit to mehta's webinar thanks for your time i'm sure the participants will get benefit from your experience and today we have our presenter ms salini nagraj salini is partner mehta and mehta from our bangalore branch and as usual we have with us mr bala who is veteran and is regular speaker uh, writing articles and he has given various lectures at various forums and he not give he has a more than 40 years of experience uh Sadly, today Mr. Sudhakar will not, is not there because he got some emergency work and he has to attend that. So he is at present in a flight. But we have Mr. Bala and Mr. Rohit, and our own participants are actually equal active to make this webinar interesting. Ah, uh, so I'll request Mr. Rohit to say few word on the topic introduction. then mr bala and then uh, shalini you can start and uh, as participants as usual put your questions in the chat box at the relevant time it will be picked by mr bala and will be answered by panelist and also at the end of the session we will allow time to speak to the person who raised the hands thanks a lot over to mr rohit thanks ma'am for introduction and inviting uh, bonus issue buyback both are uh, interesting topics not just from a secretarial compliance perspective but a lot from market participant perspective as well as you may see that as soon as a company announces bonus or buyback uh, the retail investors typically get excited and uh, start purchasing the shares uh, so it is an imperative that uh, companies create such opportunities where uh, they are able to partake the wealth creation with retail investors through instruments such as buyback and uh, bonus issue uh, while we'll try and cover and, and i'm sure shalini has made an excellent presentation uh, on uh, both the topics i'll try and sort of add uh, the practical aspects which were we experienced while we did our bonus in uh, split thank you uh friends just before mr bala start uh we have added features now of accounting and taxation aspect there will be separate presentation on taxation aspect on the both the topic as we have many questions regularly coming for taxation aspect so that is added advantage and we are adding this that's way 360 degree to this topic thanks yeah over to mr bala good morning to all of you as usual i have a great pleasure in welcoming you all on saturday morning session it is really a enriching knowledge and also reaffirming reconfirming our understanding whenever we go through the company site every time we have opportunity to learn new things now when it comes to the bonus share now here what happens is it is actually the bonus share is the right of the company to issue the bonus share when the bonus share is issued the shareholder does not have the right to accept or reject which happens the other way when we go for the purchase of the share etc they have the option right to they have the relinquish etc that is not the case and again the bonus share comes without any cost but in a way although we say it is coming without any cost as uh, rohit has uh, put one advantage is as soon as the bonus is announced the share price comes closer to Lesser than half, if it is one is to one, or proportionately whatever it is, so that when the share price has come down, there are more investors tend to afford and to participate in the market of that particular company. That is one issue of the bonus. Coming to the buyback, is buyback an issue? 
what happens is in the case of the buyback, the buyback can only be done by the companies who are actually cash rich companies. Because money has to be virtually returned back to the shareholders who surrender the share. So the prerequisite is the cash rich company is must. The next question comes why did the company do the buyback? Because the company is having enough cash, they don't need that money actually for any additional development purposes or investment purposes in the company. Surplus cash is there, they are having more cash. Probably they would like to return back to the existing shareholders so that they are telling the existing shareholders, okay, whatever the amount of the portion you can surrender, we can actually return the cash. That is one way. In a way, it is nothing but a easy way of doing a capital reduction of the company. If the company wants to do the capital restructuring, capital reduction, etc., and other thing and all, this is the easy way of doing the capital reduction. That is one of the things which is actually happening here. But a lot of intricacies are there when we are actually doing it. When you are talking about the buyback the share, what sort of the share can be buyback, what is the quantum can be bought back, and what periodical interval can be bought back, who are the authorities, whether board can do it or it has to go to the shareholders, all these intricacies are involved. And again, many a time what happens is, although we are in the routine work, we think everything is okay, and other thing we go, we miss out some finer points. Finer point is a sense, either it is a bonus issue, the authorized capital need to accommodate because it is nothing but bonus issue as a capitalizing the reserve. So your authorized capital should be sufficiently enough to accommodate the increased capital. Many times it we actually miss out. It has happened in one of the case. I think Shalini is going to discuss with us. Similarly, in the case of the buyback, also the authority is recording. Unless the article of association does not authorize the buyback, company may not be able to do the buyback and they'll have to do the amendment to the article cycle before you start the exercise. So all these intricacies which are actually involved sometime be in the routine work, we tend to miss out on all the things. So Shalini is going to bring out those uh, finer points. And there are a couple of uh, case laws also, she is actually going to discuss with this unrelated matter. And Mr. Rohit, he is uh, having a hands-on experience, uh, handle the issues, etc. I am very sure that is the practical experience will add to our participants what is the intricacies, what is the thing. And uh, I request Rohit to add as and when as a slide is being presented, any value addition from your side so that we are much benefited from your practical experience. With this, I request Shalini to take the us through the presentation. Over to Shalini, please. Thank you, sir. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'll just share my screen. Rohit, there are already 157 participants. Even before we started the presentation, the people started putting the questions. Yes, sir. One small thing I would like to inform here, this is being the master class on the company side to provisions. Whatever relating to the CB LODR does not form part of the discussions. Although Shalini will be touching upon what is applicable in case of the listed companies, etc. So please do not raise any question relating to the LODR because LODR is not part of this presentation. We are restricting our presentation only to the company side related provisions. So uh, today, yes, sir. Good morning. Uh, so today we will be uh, uh, deliberating on uh, two interesting topics. First, uh, bonus shares and buyback of shares. Uh, uh, the presentation would be split. First, we will cover the bonus shares, and then we will move on to buyback. Bonus shares. Uh, so uh, let's start with an introduction to the bonus shares. Bonus shares are the additional shares which a company uh, uh, issues to its uh, current shareholders uh, on the basis of the uh, uh, shares held by them. These bonus shares are also called as script dividends or uh, capitalization issues. Uh, the, uh, these bonus shares come at a free of cost. The shareholders will not have to pay any additional money for such issue. Uh, in contrast to dividends, uh, uh, dividends are the payments made from uh, uh, profits in cash. 
bonus shares are capitalization of reserves uh, or a uh, part of the retained earnings which is capitalized and uh, issued in form of the bonus shares to the current shareholders uh, bonus shares can be awarded to the shareholders uh, of the company which has sizable profits so only a cash rich company can go and make bonus shares we will have to note one thing here bonus shares cannot be issued in lieu of dividend a company cannot uh, opt to issue bonus shares instead of paying dividend and thereby uh, uh, trying to evade dividend distribution tax. Uh, let's understand bonus uh, shares with an example. Uh, say for a, uh, the, uh, uh, when a bonus uh, issue is made by a company, uh, the existing uh, shareholder will be getting the shares on a pro rata basis. Say for example, uh, the company says for every two shares held by a shareholder, he ends up getting one uh, equity share. In that case, what happens is a shareholder who uh, on the record date holds 1000 shares, then uh, he is eligible to get 500 shares, thereby his total shareholding will increase. Okay. On eligibility. So the company will have to first meet a few set criteria to be able to start the bonus issue. Uh, first, on the record date, uh, the investor should be the shareholders and they should be eligible to receive the distribution of bonus issue. The shareholders who hold the shares on the record date or on the X date are only uh, going to get the bonus shares. Say, for example, on the record date, a shareholder has transferred shares or in the DMAT securities, he has sold his shares. The buyer, the, uh, the effect or the credit to the buyer's account will get affected only in T plus two, okay? As on the record date, the seller is still the shareholder. In this case, the seller would get the bonus shares and not the buyer. Then the purchase of shares will not uh, will have to be made before the X date. If at all a buyer wants to uh, participate in a bonus issue, he should ensure that at least T minus three or T minus four is his uh, uh, purchase date of the shares, so that he enjoys or reaps the benefits of the bonus issue. Prerequisite conditions uh, uh, for uh, issue of bonus shares by a company: first, the articles of association should provide for a provision or should authorize the company to issue bonus shares to its shareholders. If at all such provision is missing, or if such provision is not provided in the Articles of Association, then the company will have to first amend its Articles of Association and then initiate the process of bonus shares. Also, uh, once a bonus shares are uh, uh, issued, uh, the company will also have to ensure that there is sufficient buffer or uh, sufficient uh, uh, capital in the authorized share capital of the company to allocate such bonus shares. Say if the company has 10 crores as uh, paid up capital and authorized capital is also 10 crores, in that case, the bonus shares cannot be allocated here because there is no buffer in the uh, authorized share capital. There is no addition, addition of shares to be made there. So the company will have to first amend its uh, capital clause amend its MOA, and then initiate the process for bonus issue. Bonus shares cannot be partly paid. Any bonus issue will have to be fully paid up. And uh, this can be, uh, this issue can come out of the free reserves of the company or the security premium account of the company or the capital redemption reserve account of the company. Like I mentioned earlier, bonus issue cannot be made in lieu of dividends. Uh, also, the bonus shares cannot be issued out of capitalization of reserves made out of the uh, made for the revaluation of assets. If at all a company has any non-resident shareholders or foreign institutional investor play, FII players, then the company should also ensure compliance with FEMA. And listed companies will have to ensure compliance with SEBI LODR and ICDR requirements. Okay, moving on to the next topic. Uh, why does a company want to issue bonus shares? What is the reason? Uh, issuing bonus shares is one way of re rewarding the shareholders, even with which doesn't uh, uh, affect the cash reserves. There is no uh, cash movement as such, be it from the shareholder side or from the company side. It is just a, a accounting entry which is being passed there. So uh, bonus shares increase the number of outstanding shares available in the market, uh, which uh, helps the uh, small investors or the retail investors to afford and uh, the shares are now uh, high in number and it, this ensures a high liquidity of shares. 
and bonus shares. Uh, uh, once there is a bonus issue, uh, the uh, there being a uh, increased number of shares, the market price of the shares come down, which enables the uh, small players to uh, venture into the uh, 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 stocks. By showing the bonus shares, uh, what happens is the company has the company is able to conserve its cash resources. Thereby, it can utilize this cash in any of the upcoming or new investments or in any new projects. Uh, bonus shares does not uh, attract any tax liabilities, uh, unlike dividends. So this will be covered in the forthcoming slide. Legal framework. So what are the provisions of uh, Companies Act which govern the bonus issue? Section 63 of uh, Companies Act 2013, read with Rules 5 and Rule 14, uh, and 14 of Companies Share Capital and Debenture Rules. Then Rule 5, 10, and 24 of Companies Management and Administration Rules. Rules 9A, 9B, and 12 of Companies Prospectus and Allotment of Security Rules 2014. So we would be covering only Companies Act uh, uh, and uh, the rules made there under, under this presentation. So EBI, uh, SEBI uh, LODR compliances and uh, SEBI listing or ICDR regulations, we would be touch basing those, but we would not be uh, deliberating detailly on uh, SEBI compliances. Moving on, uh, procedure for issuing of bonus shares. Uh, First, the company should ensure it, have, it has the authorization to issue bonus shares in the Articles of Association. If not, like I mentioned earlier, the company will have to first amend its articles, ensure the company has sufficient authorized share capital. And uh, once the company has met these two criteria, then the actual process for issue of bonus shares would commence. Company will have to convene a board meeting, ensure the compliance of Secretarial Standard 1, and listed companies will have to intimate the stock exchanges about the proposed bonus issue. Uh, and uh, once the uh, in the board meeting, the company will have to uh, recommend the bonus issue, fix the record date, the quantum of issue, and the ratio of bonus issue. Uh, in the same board meeting, the company will also have to approve the EGM, uh, the notice for EGM. Uh, and then uh, uh, circulate it to the uh, shareholders. Uh, listed companies will have to uh, intimate the outcome of the board meeting to the uh, stock exchanges wherever the shares of the company is being listed. And uh, uh, companies will have to, unlisted public companies or listed companies will have to uh, file form MGT-14, uh, which is the uh, uh, for uh, filing the board resolution, which is passed by the uh, shareholder, uh, which is passed by, uh, by the board of directors for approval of uh, bonus issue. Uh, companies, uh, sorry, process of issuing uh, bonus shares. Uh, listed companies shall, uh, shall notify the uh, stock exchanges about the record date. There should be a record date, uh, like I mentioned earlier, as on the record date is the, the, the record date is the date on which the shareholders are, uh, uh, the list of shareholders are drawn and to those shareholders, the bonus issue will be made. So uh, the uh, companies will have to intimate the stock exchange about the record date and listed entities will also have to make a public announcement about the bonus issue and uh, they'll have to ensure communication with the shareholders and they have to ensure the uh, their website provides all such uh, disclosures and the issues relating to the bonus shares. Then uh, uh, the company will have to conduct an EGM uh, and uh, pass the uh, and obtain the uh, consent of the shareholders or the approval of the shareholders via special resolution for authorization of the bonus issue and file the uh, form MGT-14 within 30 days of passing of such resolution. After this, Hi, company... if I can step yes, in, some, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, nuances as you may come across this process, uh, if your articles are not providing for it, or if your authorized capital is not adequate enough to accommodate the fresh issue of shares, which you give as bonus mm -hmm. issue, Typically, what companies do is they try and take this as part of one meeting itself. So first, they yes. amend the then they will propose amendment to a capital clause along with amendment to article. Then the third resolution is bonus, which bonus we can write that it is subject to receipt of approval for increase of capital and alteration of article. 
Uh, the problem we face in bonus issue is SEBI LODR says that the bonus issue since declaration till listing cannot exceed 60 days. So it's a race against time. And what companies try and do is they try bring it everything in the same meeting. Uh, mm -hmm. The other aspect, if you can go to, go to the prerequisite uh, condition slide there, if you see a few more nuances, if I can add here. Uh, the bonus issue cannot be in lieu of dividend. Now, how do you demonstrate this? Now, our assessment from the regulations and the market practice showed that you have to demonstrate it by declaring some dividend before you actually issue bonus or you know or you you declare and credit bonus. Now, it is it's it's uh, interesting that for the listed companies, the record date for the dividend is in five working days, whereas the record date for the bonus is typically after shareholders have approved the bonus issue because you can't set the list of shareholders unless the shareholders have actually approved it. So there are a few questions around the record date on the bonus. It, it's, it's always only after the shareholders have approved it. And then you follow Reg 42 or if it's Companies Act, the board is free to decide the record date once the resolution is approved. The last point on uh, FEMA perspective, it's a very interesting thing that uh, we ourselves uh, experienced. Uh, in 2022, uh, you know, around COVID time, government came with Press Note 3, which kind of restricted investments from neighboring countries or peripheral countries. Now, it is, in, it is very important for any company before you declare bonus to check if you have any shareholders from China, Hong Kong, because typically certain investors will be coming from those nations and that will create a complication for you because then you have to seek prior approval for issuing any shares to residents or citizens from these in, these, these countries. Uh, and if you happen to be listed company, then you are not able to meet the 60-day timeline. Most probably you will not be able to meet the 60-day timeline. Your filing of form FCGPR, whenever you issue shares to a non-resident, will get stuck. This whole thing will then become a complicated problem. Uh, the solution to that is typically try and see what is the nature of the category of your foreign investors. If they came as an FDI, then you need prior approval from MHA as per Press Note 3. But if they came as FPI, then you don't need. So that's the clarification we sought from RBI. And RBI was quite happy in understanding the challenges that we face, the 60-day timeline, etc. Mm -hmm. And they were able to guide us on these lines. The original categorization, when the first investment came, will decide the treatment of the bonus issue as well, whether it falls in FDI or whether it falls in FPI. So that is an interesting thing we uh, uh, experienced while uh, we were doing it. Uh, third point, uh, it can be out of free reserve securities premium. Uh, one more thing we uh, experienced while we did it, is you have to also factor the convertible securities which are outstanding as on the date of declaration of bonus issue by the board. For example, if you have certain ESOPs or if you have certain CCPS or OCDs, then you have to provide so much amount in terms of securities premium, which is adequate to issue bonus shares when these convertible securities gets exercised or their rights are exercised and we issue them those shares. For example, if you have OCDs outstanding, then your security premium amount that you mention in your resolution has to accommodate that. Say a year down the line after your bonus issue is done, those debentures are converted. They will also get the bonus entitlement in whatever 1S21 or 1S22 ratio, which the equity shareholders got on the record date. Similar is the treatment for ESOP holders and employee pre corporate action or the bonus he is entitled to bonus shares as and when he exercises it. So factor those amounts when you are kind of uh, assessing the need for capitalization of reserves. If the reserves are not adequate, then you have a challenge. You have to wait for some time uh, till you have adequate reserves and then provide for it. Thanks a lot, Mr. Rohit. All more very practical tips you have given, which your CS has to keep in mind, and especially FEMA, your experience, your uh, discussion with RBI, all participants really get that. Yeah, yeah, the RBI was really the value addition, which is a great help to mm -hmm. all of us. Yeah, sir. Please.
So uh, once the uh, special resolution uh, is filed in eForm MGT 14, uh, the company can uh, uh, go ahead and file eForm Pass 3 for allotment of uh, bonus shares, then uh, credit the bonus shares to the uh, DMAT account of the eligible shareholders as on the record date. Uh, uh, if at all, uh, the few fri uh, private limited companies still hold securities in physical form. Uh, which are small companies for whom dematerialization or rule 9b is not applicable those companies will have to uh, issue new share certificates to the uh, eligible shareholders uh, confirming the bonus uh, the confirming the allotment of uh, bonus shares uh, listed companies will have to ensure uh, compliance with sebi and stock exchanges uh, including updating the capital uh, details with the depositories or the registrar and share transfer agents so uh, post issue compliances like I mentioned earlier, the company will have to file uh, eForm Pass 3 uh, for allotment of securities. Then listed companies will have to uh, communicate the bonus issue to the uh, SEBI and stock exchanges. Also, listed entities will have to uh, ensure the uh, uh, final listing of such bonus uh, uh, shares on the stock exchange and ensure these shares are available for trading uh, for the shareholders. Uh, and then uh, uh, all companies will have to make uh, entries to their uh, registers maintained and ensure compliance with the ongoing uh, disclosure and uh, capital reporting requirements. So uh, moving on, uh, uh, next topic is accounting treatment for bonus shares. Uh, this would be uh, covered by my co-panelist, uh, um, uh, C.A. Chandan. Uh, over to you, Chandan. Sorry, uh, one more yes. practical experience we faced is uh, the dispatch of physical shares. Even for listed entities, it's interesting that uh, amid all SEBI and stock exchange requirements and the push for DMAT, uh, the law says, and this we had checked with SEBI as well, if you have, if a listed entity has shareholders who are holding shares in physical form, the bonus shares has to be issued in physical form as well. And uh, that needs to be simultaneous to the corporate action that we run to en enable the listing of those shares, though they, they may not be able to trade on those, but you have to demonstrate that you have completed the allotment and dispatch of share certificates, send them by registered post without you know any mistake on your part. Uh, so for that purpose, one, one company should first check whether they have the, the, the share certificate books which we write, okay. which is a forgotten practice these days. So uh, that is one thing we, we we kind of had to figure out and get it printed and you know uh, mm -hmm. arranged for very quickly because most of the time this will get overlooked because in the world of DMAT, okay. uh, who issues physical shares? So be mindful of that as well. You are absolutely right, Rohit, because dematerialization applies only in case of the issuance of the share. The people yeah. who have bought the share about 20 years back, 60 years back, for the holding Correct. purpose of investment, they still continue to hold. Because holding and continue to hold, there's no problem. When it comes to the trading, the further transaction only done with the demand. This situation is there. In fact, if I remember long back, I think, now I do not know that you any of you can update actually. The stock exchange used to have what you call a, uh, what you call a odd trading odd windows. Lots. Odd lots trading windows. That means the small shareholders holding their share, 50 shares, 40 shares, like that, etc. And all this thing that cannot be traded in the stock exchange. You have to go to the specifically the odd trading windows, and you can surrender there. You can get it changed. That was there. Whether I don't know whether still that is in existence or not. But here you had a very valid point. People who continue to hold the share in the physical form, that need to be done. In the world of the digitalization, we think there is no paper is required. That will create a problem. You are right. They are telling, could you repeat the part of physical share in case of bonus issue? So, it is basically stated that if you have any shareholder which are holding any, any physical shares, then you have to issue bonus shares also in physical format, even if you are listed. And also that listing at the time of listing, the same should be taken care. That is the point is mentioned. Right, Mr. Roy, I have put in that line. If yeah, I that is, yeah, yeah. But, but only thing is the share which are in the physical form that cannot be traded unless they get it demonetized. Yeah, they, before trading, they have to come. Yeah. Yeah, yeah correct. But they can continue to hold. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, Chandan is present in right? Yeah. Potential yes. fraud. Uh, so I'll be covering the accounting and tax treatment with respect to bonus issues. Basically, uh, as per the previous slides that we have understood, bonus shares cannot be issued and unless we have sufficient free reserves to fund for those bonus shares. It's like capitalizing our free reserves instead of issuing the dividend. We consider this to be one of the dividend distribution methods by issuing bonus shares. So what happens when we issue bonus shares with respect to accounting treatment is very simple. It's just a notional transfer entry that we need to make in our books of accounts, wherein we transfer the free reserves to the share capital. We need to also take care that we have enough free reserves that is in the form of security premium reserve or in the form of general reserve or do we have any kind of uh, retained earnings that we have made made as a free reserve. We have to transfer, we have to make a transfer entry from these free reserves to the share capital. The rest, all the disclosures will be given in the statement of changes to equity because once there is issue of bonuses, there is always change in the nature of e number of equity shares that is held, number of e the value of the equity share capital. So there is a change in the equity share capital. So we give all those disclosures, necessary disclosures in the uh, statement of changes to, changes to equity part of the financial statements. Coming to the taxation aspect, as we all know, bonus shares is issued at free of cost. Bonus shares is issued always at the free of cost. So what happens is the, uh, the purchase price of these bonus shares tends to be zero. So when these shares are sold, when these shares are sold, they are considered to be the full value of capital line and they are taxed at the rate of 10% or at the prevailing rate depending on the holding period. If it is a listed security or listed shares, the holding period to be considered for long term is only 12 months. So if at all we are getting a bonus share and we are holding it for the period of 12 months or more, then if it is listed entity, then we will get to know that it is taxed under section 112A at the rate of 10%. It is imperative to note that we should also uh, understand that there is something, there is some concept called as bonus scripting, which, which is very prevalent in the Indian markets. Basically, until 2023 budget, this was not taken care by any of the income tax department provisions because until 2023, we had covered only listed securities. That is, we did not. It was covered only for listed securities in the form of mutual fund units. We did not cover listed shares. Now, as per from 1st April 2023, the, the, share, the whole section becomes applicable for even the listed shares. That is, if at all we are purchasing any shares just three months before the issue of bonus shares or record date of bonus shares, and we are not holding it for a period of nine months or more, we are not holding it for a period of nine months or more, that will be considered to be a bonus stripping transaction and we won't be allowed to set off any losses arising from such transactions. It is very imperative to note that this has been covered for the, now the whole definition has been changed from mutual fund units to listed shares and securities. So anytime we are buying a security for less than three months and uh, we are not uh, holding it for up to nine months, it becomes imperative that we are getting into a transaction called bonus stripping transaction. Chandan, you went on mute. Yes. Yes, Shani. I guess my part with respect to bonus shares is done. Uh, I am handing it over to you again. Chandan, the participant is selling. You go slow because uh, you are able to follow. still in talking. So okay. your place should be slow. Got it. Got the it. The last part, in, uh, last part. The I stripping think, needs to be explained that, again. That yeah. should go slowly. Okay. okay. We'll, 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 take, we'll take this again. We'll take this again. No issues. Uh, considering bonus stripping transaction is that transaction uh, where people buy shares or securities only for the purpose of getting those bonus shares. Only for the purpose of getting those bonus shares. What happens is at times we get to know that the record date is somewhere around April 15th or April 30th. So we buy the shares just before the issuance or record date of bonus shares to get the share, to get those bonus shares. So what happens in this case is Post recording of bonus shares, the share price tends to fall in the stock market. The share price tends to fall in the stock market and we try to sell those bonus shares and record something called as short term capital loss. We record something called as short term capital loss through which what we uh, through which we can set off any of the capital gains that has arised throughout the year. So this came out to the notice of income tax department wherein now they have made it mandatory. If at all we have to get the benefit of short-term capital loss to set off 
uh, in to set off for any of the capital gains that have arisen in the past. So we need to hold those bonuses for at least a period of nine months, for at least a period of nine months or more. And we would have we should have purchased those shares uh, at least three months. One minute, your possible. slide is uh, for buyback, and you are talking. No, no. Okay, bonus on this. Sorry. Maybe yes. the whole, whole idea, Chandan, if yes. I understand correctly, suppose there is a person who is holding 100 shares. Yes. He gets a one is to one share, he gets another additional 100 shares, 200 yes. shares. Yes, yes. Now, as per the example given by you in terms of the bonus stripping, yes. since he is holding this 100 share originally, what he has brought for the long time, yes. he will be eligible to sell those 100 shares at any point of time. There is no issue on that. Depending upon whether short-term capital or long-term capital. Yes, 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 exactly. But uh, however, the 100 new share which he has got on the bonus issue, he is necessarily has to hold for a period of nine months. Before that, if he sells, then this provision will get attracted. Am I yes, correct? Yes, exactly, sir. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, the issue is that first line of the client says accounting treatment of buyback. Okay, okay, okay. And it is that's why these questions are coming. It's a mistake. It is... For bonus shares. Okay, okay, okay. okay. I think, yes. uh, I think sorry. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, it's asking, mistake on my part. Sorry. Yeah, and go to the. They are telling even the tax treatment slowly. You take it. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, when it comes to track tax treatment of these bonus shares, tax treatment of these bonus shares, it is imperative to note that a shareholder is not paying any amount for purchasing these bonus shares. It is allotted to him based on the shareholding pattern that he is carrying for a very long time. That is, on record date, if he is holding certain shares, based on which the ratio would be dependent and he will get something called as bonus shares. So, it is imperative to note that he is not paying anything for purchase of those bonus shares. So, when he is selling those bonus shares, the whole sale price will become the value that is to be assessed for capital gain. Suppose, suppose he holds 100 shares on April 15th. April 15th becomes the record date and the bonus ratio is 1 is to 1. He gets 100 new shares. If at all he is selling those 100 shares which he got through bonus, he has not paid any amount for those bonus shares. And if at all he is selling those 100 shares at the rate of 10 rupee per share, then 1000 would be the value for sale price. So that 1000 would be completely considered to be capital gains and tax at the, tax at the rate of long term capital gain or short term capital gain based on the holding period of those shares. I think it's clear now. Yes. And that's all uh, your taxation presentation, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'll hand it over to Shalini for taking, uh, taking Chandra, it. Chandra, and again, the holding period will be right from the day of the allotment, the holding period of nine months will be considered, correct? Yes. Yes. Right from the date of allotment. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, now, uh, Mr. Bala, I think Shalini, this uh, bonus presentation is over. Yeah, we will take up the questions related uh, to the bonus. We have one, one case law. We will discuss the case law and then take up the yeah, questions. Sure, sure, sure. Then move on to buyback. Yeah, thank you, Chandan. Yeah. Yes, Thanks, Chandan. So uh, we have one interesting case law here. Uh, uh, this is Sanjay Paliwal versus Paliwal Hotels Private Limited. So here, uh, what happened was uh, Sanjay, uh, sorry, Paliwal Hotels Private Limited had uh, made an uh, issue or offer of bonus shares. However, on the date of the purported allotment, okay, so on the date of making the allotment of the bonus shares, the company did not have sufficient authorized uh, capital. So uh, uh, what happened here was uh, the company didn't have the buffer to make the allotment of bonus shares. And as such, uh, it was held by the company law board that the bonus uh, uh, issue uh, does not stand valid and the company will have to first increase their authorized share capital and then make an uh, uh, offer, offer or issue of the bonus shares. So, and this, uh, like uh, uh, Rohit sir mentioned earlier, in the same EGM and board meeting, the, the first agenda item can be to increase the authorized share capital and the next agenda item can be to declare the bonus shares. This is what was uh, uh, held by the company law board. Yeah. Yeah, but he also mentioned the practical difficulties in doing that also. Correct. So, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so a couple of points so, uh, before you switch to buyback and yes. uh, 
and and thanks for in fact uh, taking up this topic it made me also research few things which we had not figured out then uh can uh, okay so if, if your ratio bonus ratio happens to create fractional shares for example for every five shares held you give two bonus shares and a person who's holding say eight shares will end up getting two bonus shares but then for rest of the three shares that is no 5 plus 3 for those three he is not entitled to any bonus shares so that is called as a fractional bonus entitlement if your ratio is leading to creation of fractional bonus entitlement then the company needs to pass the resolution which allows treatment of the fractional bonus entitlement which in most cases leads as follows the company appoints a bank or a, a you know a kmp or a trustee in whose demat account these bonus shares which are all in 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 fractional bonus entitlement in aggregate is credited the person is authorized to sell those shares in open market on as soon as possible basis the money that is collected or realized upon sale of those shares is then allocated in a fractional manner to those shareholders who were entitled for it and that is paid as dividend and not bonus entitlement and this happens to get taxed as dividend and not bonus because you are not getting shares you are getting dividend so mm -hmm. this is a uh, interesting case and uh, anybody who wants to research further can see e clerks uh, between august to december 22 when they came up with uh, their bonus issue they had very nicely laid out uh, everything on the stock exchange uh, so this is as far as fractional bonus entitlement is concerned second can there be bonus debentures one might think or you know question can a company issue debentures in in form of bonus issue well answer to that is yes uh, ntpc happened to do it in 2015 uh, anybody interested to dig more about this procedure can uh, visit stock exchange or google by uh, i think it's march 2015 when they came up with listed bonus debentures to their shareholders this again is paid out of free reserves following the company law procedure uh, can preference shares be given as bonus shares in lieu of your equity well that has also been uh, there been a precedent to that effect recently tvs motor did it so anybody willing to look further into this or you know you want to restructure in this fashion uh, visit uh, stock exchanges uh, website for uh, tvs motors this is in march 24 the other interesting case uh, uh, could be as to the impact of bonus on esops so like i said uh, from a procedural first perspective it is important that while you issue, issue esops you need in principle approval from exchanges as per esop regulations but when you are issuing bonus share the esop holder like we discussed earlier is also entitled for his bonus entitlement as and when he exercises esops for that purpose in addition to having in principle approval from the exchange for the original esop pool the company needs to reach out to the stock exchanges and get an incremental in principle approval for the bonus pool that will come out of the bonus issue for example if company had earlier sought shareholders approval for issue of esops up to say 1 crore shares of those 1 crore say 90 lakh are outstanding 10 lakh have been exercised till the bonus issue uh, or the bonus record date the 90 lakh is an original in principle approval that stock exchange has already given you if you are doing a bonus issue of 1s to 1 then eventually you will end up allotting one more extra share for each share that is exercised so you will need an incremental in principle approval of 90 lakh further shares so you go to stock exchanges get that in principle approval you present the reconciliation in in their format which is one of a prerequisite for in principle approval and the exchange will give you an in principle accrual for the bonus entitlement so each time a employee is exercising his shares he gets the bonus shares and exchange will allow you to list those incremental shares that you end up as a bonus entitlement if we miss this step then what will happen is you will exhaust your 90 lakh uh, bonus pool and the remaining 90 lakh whenever an employee exercises you will not be able to list those shares in a time period given so that is a slip that might happen in case uh, we don't pay attention to the esop holders and their bonus entitlements
Rohit, you are really, really given a very insight uh, of the things. Although we think the, by looking at the bonus, it is very simple. I said, looks like that. The various intricacies which you actually thrown upon today is really, really, you know, eye-opening for us. Yeah. Now we can take questions. Yeah. The first question is the for... The entire authorized share capital of a wholly owned subsidy of a listed company is paid up. On EGM subsidy, on EDM, subsidy increase the authorized share capital. Can subsidy immediately after the EGM, before filing any form to ROC, convened board meeting and offer share to the holding company at its nominee under the right issue of the bonus issue? I don't think unless you file the form, you completed the process. Although you are authorized share capital, unless you file the form with the ROC, I think you are not completed the process. Without filing the form, you cannot take any further action. Correct, no, Shalini? Yes, sir. You have to file the form. The situation is nowadays there are a lot of pending for approval because that is uh, increase in authorized capital, it's pending approval and registration. If within that 10 line, Again, you uh, take bonus says The issue will be that you will not able to file the PS3 because that uh, your original increase in authorized capital is not done. So there will be delay, and there will be that consequences you are to for. That's it. So, ma'am, uh, we happen to experience this exact situation, and I'm happy that Meta Meta was able to help us uh, uh, file the form. So this exact. The bonus issue of ours happened to be when the transition from V2 to V3 was happening. And at that time, no forms were getting filed. <laughs> we, uh, we were struggling to file our increase of authorized capital. Like I said, we increased the authorized capital in the same meeting. We, we amended our MOA in the same meeting and we approved the bonus issue in the same meeting. So without having the headroom for authorized capital, we went ahead, declared the bonus, did the shareholders approval as well. Then we were struggling to file our, uh, I think, MGT 14 and uh, increase of capital, which was getting stuck and, you know, midnight filings, all nasty experiences, which is where I think Meta team was able to prepare the form and file it. That filing happened, took some time to get approved. Then we did our pass three, which obviously caused a delay and obviously the penalty. But uh, purely because of the ROC website glitches, we were facing this issue. But on a practical basis today, uh, given that uh, the ROC filing is smooth, this is doable. You can increase the capital in the same meeting, issue the bonus in the same meeting and ensure the filing is happening. Yeah. Thank so you. The so that's why you specifically mentioned that. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Now, filing is required to be done in any case because without filing, you cannot take the action. That is the point which is actually coming here. And I yes, think Jampur, Jampurathan has given a feedback. Buyback are more tax effective means of the rewarding the shareholders. I think Solid is going to discuss that. It is very true because when, when I state of the buyback, the tax is actually with the company, not with the shareholder. To that extent, yes, he is right. Absolutely. Thank, thank Jampurathan for sharing your views. What is the usual cost of the bonus share when it does not involve any cash flow or from the company? Why this is unnecessary expenditure? Sorry, uh, what's the what question? What is the usual cost of the bonus share issue? When, okay. does, when does it involve any cash flow? When it does not involve any cash flow to from the company, why this unnecessary expenditure? Okay, I think uh, uh, bonus issue for a listed company is a substantially expensive because uh, you increase the capital, pay ROC fees, your, uh, you know, your capital base increases for processing corporate actions, CDSL, NSDL will charge a heavy amount. BSC, NSC will charge an increased listing fee. There are a lot of consultants involved with whom you have to get avail services, pay the fees. The R&T will obviously charge a huge amount for that. So there's a substantial cost for issuing bonus shares and absolutely agree that there's no cash flow growing from the company to a shareholder. However, empirically, it has been observed that if you reduce your share price from say 5,000 rupees or 6,000 rupees in a way that makes it 
uh, you know, affordable for retail investors, bring it to like 1,000, 2,000 rupees uh, bracket, then the retail participation of the investors increases. If there is increased volume, there is a likelihood of increased price. This is not a law. This is pure uh, market dynamics, how it has been experienced in the past. And that is the reason why companies prefer giving bonus issue in order to capitalize the lot of free reserves that they are sitting and a very narrow capital base that they hold. You increase the capital base, invite more people to trade into your shares. That is the whole idea of incurring so much, uh, uh, you know, regulatory fees, costs uh, and doing a bonus issue. Yeah. Increase in the authorized capital that may proceed the bonus issue will result in the increase of the ROC filing fees for all further filing. Yeah, he understands. Yeah. yeah, that is there. That is going to be the case. Okay. Mm. Can Section 8 company issue bonus share and the capital profit? I think Section 8 companies are prohibited issuing the bonus share. Yeah. And somebody has also answered also. Yeah, and only exception. I think I'll uh, request no, Rogit. No, only to... answer. Sorry. <laughs> no, I'll request Rogit to confirm. I think probably Section Eight company, although they are actually prohibited issue of the bonus share, probably they issue the bonus share to their employees. I think. Am I correct? Uh, so if I remember, I don't have it handy, but I think Section Eight restricts distribution of dividend. Uh, yeah. So Section 8 company can definitely make profit. Yeah. And since uh, the uh, one of a condition for issue of bonus share is a uh, bonus cannot be in lieu of dividend. And if you're not able to ish, you know, declare dividend because you're a Section 8, I'm not sure how will you demonstrate compliance with this condition. So it may not be a right outright prohibition for Section 8 company to issue bonus, but the challenge in demonstrating that how this bonus issue is in not in lieu of dividend uh, could be a interpretation issue. Because it will be indirect benefit to shareholders as well somewhere by increasing some benefit without revenue or anything. I don't know. Are you right that? Yeah, because by going through the spirit of the law, it uh, says that Section 8 company may not be in a position to issue the Think it probably they are prohibited in issuing the bonus share. That's what I would think. What should be the record date for the bonus? What should be? Hmm. What should be means? What should be means it is decided by the board of directors. Because once you work out the, the record date is actually decided. I do not know what, what the work. what the person intended to ask. What should be the record date of the bonus? Next, you can take. Okay. PPT, I said PPT, generally to all participants, I would like to make it very clear. PPT is not shared actually. In fact, the recorded webinar will be disseminated to, to all which contains the PPT, which you can make use of it. Please don't put up the question inside the PPT and all. It is not possible. The act says a resolution, ordinary resolution can be passed to the bonus share with the special resolution. I think you'll have to go through section 63. 63 says very clearly bonus share is to be required to be approved by the special resolution. It is as per the act. Within how much days record date needs to be fixed by the board after the approval of the shareholder for issuance of the bonus share? I think for a listed company, we had given for 11 working days as per Rec 2042, if I'm not wrong. Uh, our, our record date was 2nd March and the intimation was around mid of Feb, immediately after shareholders had approved the uh, resolution. I can I, I think anybody can just refer to uh, Rec 42 in case of a listed company. And uh, for a for an unlisted company, it is it's open to the board to decide the record date because there you are not governed by LODR, which which compels you to complete the bonus issue process in two months. Red, uh, Red 293, I think, of ICDR governs that there's a last provision which says that from declaration to trading and listing, it cannot exceed two months. Of the two foreign investors, apart from FDI, what is the other one? It's FPI, Foreign Portfolio Investors, the one who comes through a stock exchange pool. In a listed. Yeah. 
when a bonus share is issued, is the price of the convertible instrument also adjusted pursuant to the such issue? Uh, in a way, yes. If there are listed uh, convertible securities, obviously they will adjust. So as, as we have X bonus, come bonus yeah. for any uh, equity share. Uh, and as uh, Shalini had earlier explained, T plus two, what will happen is even two days prior to the record date, the, the price will adjust itself. So in, in her example, if the share price is say 1000 rupees, two days prior, it will adjust to 500 because if you miss that date uh, and if you buy on a T minus one, you're not getting bonus entitlement in any case because your name will not come in a record date. Same principle will apply to any convertible security as well. In fact, in case of ESOPs, for example, and, and if I carry forward Shalini's example, if an employee is holding an ESOP, which is exercisable at say 1000 rupees, and the bonus is one is to two, then he'll get two ESOPs, which he need, which he exercises at 500 rupees. So that's the same uh, parallel we can draw for a convertible security as well. Supriya Sharma wants you actually to repeat the that part done. of the physical shares in case of the bonus issue. That we done that time. I read that and that's why I done that all repetition. And okay. okay. After the board resolution passed for the bonus allotment, within how many days corporate action should be affected for DMAT share? Like I said, uh, LODR compels you to complete it in 60 days. Uh, and it's not after the board resolution, it's actually after the shareholder's approval is when you will decide the record date. Uh, typically, a committee of the board is empowered to take these decisions so you don't have to call a board meeting. Uh, and it's smoother that way. But uh, follow Reg 42, uh, the advance notice that we need to give for any record date for any corporate action. And accordingly, we decide the record date. And in case of unlisted company, it's all open. Sharehold, as soon as shareholders have passed the resolution, the board can decide the record date, uh, which can be any Friday because it helps you get a free Ben Poss. Otherwise, you have to spend additionally for... Uh, non-Friday Ben Foss as well. So little, uh, you know, a cost conscious mind also needs to be applied when you do all these exercises. There is somebody has put up a question why existing shares should not be proportional to bonus share instead of the taxing the entire value of the bonus share. For that, I think Jambuna, the, yeah. here the, the answer has been actually given by the Chandan also. No exception provided as per the Income Tax Act is always taxable on the hands of the companies. And someone says, generally, tax of the buyback of the share is exempt from the hands of the shareholders as per the section 115 QVA of the Income Tax Act. But is there any exception situation where shareholder will be taxable on the buyback? No, shareholders is not taxable on the buyback. Buyback is actually tax exemption. This thing is already answered. Because whatever the income tax rule, we have to follow the income tax rule. That's all. There is nothing else is there. Can we mention in the resolution that share will be rounded out to the nearest whole number? As a part of bonus issue? No. Yeah, that is what it appears to be because you are talking about the fractional share, no? Fraction, I think yeah. with the reference to somebody is asking, can we mention the resolution that share will be rounded out to the nearest whole number? No, uh, bonus share needs to be, as as we saw, fully paid up. If if the ratio results in a fractional share, we discussed the fraction bonus treatment. Uh, and uh, anyone, if, if, if is keen, in fact, to dig further, please refer to ECLUX bonus issue that happened in uh, August to December 22. They have very well explained this whole process, how TDS needs to be, uh, uh, you know, if you file Form 15HG, then they will save on the TDS on this amount that you get as a part of fraction bonus entitlement because it's treated as dividend under 222 of Income Tax Act. Reliance Power in 2007 had issued the bonus only to the non-promoters and not to the promoters. Panelists' view on this, please. So I think uh, Reliance Infra, which was uh, 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 which was the promoter company of uh, Reliance Power, had specifically foregone its share of bonus issue. And uh, they had foregone it in favor of the retail investors. Because if I remember skintly, the, the R Power issue came at a price which tanked after a few days. And in order to pass on the benefit to retail investors, they came up with this bonus issue. If I'm not wrong, it was five is to three. 
uh, and that kind of reduced the share price uh, or the IPO price uh, to 60% of what it was earlier. I don't remember uh, it fully, but I, I, I clearly remember there was a resolution passed uh, uh, by our infra to forego uh, the, uh, uh, their bonus entitlement in favor of retail investors. On the ground that, that the one who has right to receive has right to refuse also. That okay. Way. Okay. Will the issue of RPS as the bonus treated as the dividend or there will be taxed on redemption? Uh, okay. I think uh, this is a tax query. Honestly, I'm 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 not in a position to answer this. Yeah. So. Chandan is there? Can you please repeat the question? I couldn't understand the question. I think it is a redeemable preference share as a bonus treated as the dividend or there will be a tax on redemption. No, no, it will be tax on redemption. It will be treated as bonus shares only and whichever the bonus shares is issued, it will be treated only on the sale of shares. There will, it will never be considered as dividend. Okay. okay. What, what happens if a guarantee does not exercise this option? What treatment shall be given to the share created for bonus share? If grantee, if grantee does not exercise his option, there is no position okay. of option at all in the bonus share. Option. Where is the position of option? But, if you are holding it, automatically it is actually given to you. That's all. There is no uh, rejection and acceptance is there in the bonus issue. No, no. What, yeah. what he is telling, yeah. he, he mentioned no, that in case of future... Okay, I understood. Okay. And I the think... grantee do not exercise the option, what treatment shall be given to the shares created? Not shares, what we have created provision. Uh, for Achha, you're talking yeah. about the ESOP. Yeah. Okay, ESOP. So in, the, okay, okay. in that case, what would happen is uh, there are two ways to look at it. And I'll give an easy way out here. If uh, And we'll repeat the example we saw earlier, which uh, Shalini started with. Suppose an employee is holding ESOP, which is exercisable at a price of 1000 rupees and the bonus is in 1S to 2. Now he has to pay 500 rupees to exercise those two ESOPs uh, because ESOP regulations say that all corporate actions, uh, irrespective of the corporate action, the price or the number of bonus issues, uh, or sorry, the, the number of options need to be adjusted in a manner which is not prejudicial to the employee. So 500 into 2 is 1000. So that is how it will be uh, granted to an employee. Taking, going back to the question, if this grantee, if this employee does not exercise his options, they lapse and they come back to the pool. And if the original scheme allows reissue of lapsed options, then the company can reissue it to another employee. Yeah, go ahead. Person with issues to the bonus share, can the record date be fixed on the same board meeting where the bonus proposal is actually approved? Can the board delegate no. the... Can the board delegate the power to fix the record date for the issue of the bonus share to the specific director like a committee of directors, bonus committee, etc.? Yeah, answer to first is no, because board is only recommending the bonus. That's the language used in the company law as well. And bonus needs shareholders approval, so they cannot set a record date. Record date is always set after shareholders have approved. And second, like I earlier explained, it is better operationally if the board is authorizing the committee to do everything in regard to the bonus, including allotment, deciding record date, treatment of physical shares, etc., etc. Can we pick the record date for splitting of the share post approval Can of the shareholders on this? Deposit for splitting of shares post approval. Uh, okay, I'm... I think uh, the question is when you are splitting and bonus is is parallel. Uh, ah. Typically, okay, we, we happen to do that uh, in our case. You typically fix a same record date for the split and bonus because operationally that's pretty easy. Otherwise, uh, there will be extraordinary effort on the part of secretarial team, r and and the exchanges to handle this whole thing in 60 days. What we do in this case is while the record date could be one, the split resulting shares is allotted immediately on the next day, you go to exchange, complete the split formality so that the shares, the, the corporate action, etc. is done. Then you follow back to the exchanges for completing the bonus allotment post split. 
So to take back to Shalini's example, if thousand rupees is the share price, and if there is one share, the bonus issue in one is to two, then post split, uh, it becomes five hundred share five hundred rupee for two shares, and then post bonus in one is to two again, it will be two fifty for four shares. So that thousand into one remains intact. But it's a tedious process, uh, and yeah. uh, you have to manage it in sixty days. That's the whole challenge. Challenge is there. Can the few shareholders choose not to take accept the bonus share intention to increase the share holding in other shareholders? We discuss it is done in this reliance. No, so uh, I, I don't see any legal provision which allows ah, an option like have... renunciation in rights to bonus. Correct. So you can't do that. For increasing the tradability of the share in case of the very good build up reserve, splitting of the share into the smaller denomination is possible, which is the cheaper option for the company. I agree, but uh, a company which has already split its share price to say one rupee is left with no option but to then issue bonus to increase the liquidity. I have a follow-up question on this. After issuing the bonus share, stock prices are adjusting proportionately. It means retail investors are not getting anything as such. Erotically, yes. Whether bonus share is an inflow of the funds to the shareholders for the purpose of the taxation under Section 56.2 VC of the Income Tax Act 61, and if not an inflow, so kindly explain the status on such fund. I think we'll have to ask Chandan only. Yeah. I have already replied to the person who has asked the question through chat only. Sir. Okay, okay. Oh, yes. Again, same. Selective bonus, we cannot comment as such. We can't select you by law as such. Yeah, please carry on question. Request you to explain one more uh, bonus cannot be issued in lieu of the dividend. Okay, so there is this provision in company law, uh, section 63, that bonus cannot be issued in lieu of dividend. Uh, I, I honestly don't know the rationale for it. It was there, I suppose, in the 56 Act as well. But you have to comply with it and demonstrate the compliance. So typically what companies do is they declare a dividend in the same board meeting in which they are declaring bonus. So we demonstrate that company has declared the bonus, sorry, declared the dividend, and then they are declaring the bonus, thereby ensuring compliance with this condition. What are the, the other, the, uh, sorry, the other, yeah, yeah, the other option that the company has is, for example, if in your AGM, uh, or any in on any in prior meeting, if the board has declared an interim dividend or there has already been a final dividend for that year, then also you can use that to demonstrate compliance with this. It's not necessary that in the same meeting you do again declare a dividend. What are the main objectives of the issue of the bonus share? I think Shalini has already discussed this. Yeah. Okay. Then next question is there are ordinary solutions, special distributions. Can we close uh, bonus share? We'll have the deliberate on the buyback. Yes, we'll go through, but still there are some more questions. Uh, what do we do, Dipti? It is already 12 times. No, 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 we... no, no. Too many. It will be not many. Come no, 20... minutes. No, 25 more questions are there. Huh? 25 more questions are there. No, no, no. It is not no more. Yeah, it not is showing no. here below 26 new messages. Part of physical in case of no. Yeah, it is showing here actually. By many are comments. Okay, let us quickly go back. Yeah, please. If the buyback company has to pay, that is buyback is coming later. Can you please repeat recall company name, which is issued practice? I think we have discussed enough on this. E-clerks. Bonus, e bonus share is not issued to members, but it can be issued to employees. I think he is talking about the Section 8 company, I believe. Leave it. Bonus share cannot be made in lieu of the dividend. It means company is not paid the dividend, cannot issue the bonus share. Is this understanding correct? Theoretically, yes. Otherwise, how do we comply with this provision? Yes, that is one thing. Another rational why uh, bonus issue, uh, bonus shares cannot be issued in lieu of dividend is bonus shares are not taxable. Neither the company pays the tax nor uh, uh, the shareholder pays the tax. But dividend is taxable. Earlier, what used to happen was 
companies used to use bonus uh, issue as a rewarding mechanism to the shareholders so that they don't end up paying taxes, thereby evading the dividend tax. That was one main reason why uh, the law says bonus issue cannot be made in lieu of dividend. That yeah. is one reason. Can the bonus share be issued at a premium? They're issued free. You don't have to pay anything. There is no yeah. cost here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Bonus share itself is an incentive existing shareholder. This can be sold the X bonus in the open market. That I think we talked about it. Taxability bonus versus entitlement of share under the employee stock option scheme may be discussed, please. We have discussed this. Taxability this discussed. bonus and entitlement under SO. Both is discussed, please. Yeah. yeah. I, I think, think that's all that. we are done with. Yeah, I said that. Five minutes. Yeah. 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 Shalini, you can go ahead. Okay, okay. So uh, the next uh, topic. Uh, one minute, is, uh, all yes, participants, whosoever raise the hand after this topic is over and question answer, we will allow everyone to speak, please. Yeah, sir. So now uh, let's deliberate on uh, buyback of shares. Uh, let's first understand uh, the definition or the meaning of buyback. Uh, Cambridge Business English D Dictionary refers uh, buyback as uh, uh, the act of buying something from the same person to whom you have sold it, especially an offer by a company to buy shares of its own stock from its own shareholders. So uh, uh, what does buyback refer to? A company has allotted shares to you and the same shares are being bought back by the same company. Uh, so what does buyback? Buyback is the repurchase of uh, the company's own shares at a higher market price. Uh, this is an alternative mode of capital reduction. And this is one, one of the effective uh, method of capital restructuring for any company. Uh, Let's have a quick introduction to the buyback of shares. Uh, buyback of shares, which is also known as the repurchase, is a corporate, uh, corporate action wherein the company purchases its own shares directly from the open market or its shareholders. This process involves acquiring the outstanding shares in the market, which reduces the number of shares which are available for trading. The companies initiate buyback for various reason, uh, reasons. Uh, this could be to uh, boost the uh, earnings per share or uh, to pay back the excess cash lying with the company to its shareholders. This could be one way to signal undervaluation to the stakeholders. The, the buyback can also be initiated for uh, uh, to prevent the hostile takeovers by competitors. Uh, this is an uh, opt or to optimize the capital structure or just to return the excess cash which is available with the company, wherein if a company does not have any viable projects or any viable investments uh, avenues for the excess cash that is available uh, uh, with them, they could uh, initiate a buyback and uh, return the uh, excess cash to the shareholders. Uh, buyback uh, is one of the strategic tool which is used to manage the capital and enhance the shareholder value, which helps in achieving the uh, larger corporate objectives. So why does a company initiate buyback? Uh, buyback provides, uh, 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 provides returns to its shareholders, uh, wherein uh, the, uh, like I mentioned earlier, the excess cash available with the company will be paid to the shareholders. And this would, in fact, uh, improve the financial ratios and record a number of, uh, uh, and reduce the number of outstanding shares, which is available in the market for trading. Uh, a cash rich company with uh, excess cash, uh, wherein which does not have any viable options or uh, does not have any working capital uh, needs to be met, uh, prefers to uh, pay back to the shareholders rather than having it as an idle money lying in the bank accounts. So buyback would uh, boost the share price. This would improve the uh, ratios, say uh, the return on assets, the return on equity, the earnings per share. And uh, this, uh, this is one effective method to utilize the excessive cash which is available to the company. And this is one of the uh, efficient, tax efficient method to reward the shareholders. Uh, this would help in achieving the optimum capital structure. This would also help the uh, company in preventing hostile takeovers by the competitors.
So legal framework. So what is the governing principles or which sections or rules govern the uh, uh, buyback provisions? Uh, Companies Act uh, 2013 under Section 68, read with uh, uh, Rule 17 of uh, Share Capital and Debenture Rules 2014. Apart from this, a company will also have to ensure compliance with Section 68, uh, uh, so 68, 69, wherein once the buyback is done, the company will have to transfer the equivalent amount to capital redemption reserve account. And the company will have to ensure uh, uh, compliance with the uh, 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 provisions of Section 70, which lays down the uh, prohibition of buyback of shares. Uh, then the listed companies, uh, the buyback provisions for listed companies is governed by SEBI buyback of securities regulations 2018. Uh, like we mentioned earlier, we will not be deliberating on the uh, uh, SEBI matters uh, in today's webinar. So first, let's let's understand uh, which companies cannot do the buyback of shares, and then let's move on to the buyback process and uh, buyback regulations. So a company cannot directly or indirectly purchase or repurchase its shares or securities through its subsidiaries through its investment investment companies, or if at all a company has defaulted in repayment of loans, repayment of interest, repayment of deposits, and uh, if it, uh, and uh, if there is any uh, default in statutory payments, unless the company has made good of all these defaults, it cannot commence the procedure for uh, buyback of shares. Sources for buyback of shares. So, uh, from where does the funding come for the? Uh, from where does the uh, money come for the buyback of shares? So, the buyback can be done through the free reserves available with the company, or through the securities premium account, or the proceeds of any shares or other sp uh, specified securities. However, a company should ensure that uh, the uh, same kind of uh, the proceeds raised from the issue of same kind of securities is not utilized or used for buyback of shares. So conditions for buyback. The first and primary condition to buyback any shares is the articles of association of a company will have to authorized, authorize such buyback. And once the buyback is completed, the ratio of debt to equity shall not be more than two is to one. The shares which are proposed to be bought back by the company will have to be fully paid up. If at all the company proposes to uh, buy back any partly paid shares, it should first call the, uh, call the uh, unpaid amount, convert the partly paid shares into fully paid, and then uh, uh, initiate the buyback process. Also, the company should ensure there is a gap of at least one year between two successive uh, buyback offers. Uh, every buyback shall be completed within a period of one year. Say uh, the shareholders, uh, the board, the board or the shareholders have passed the resolution for buyback. So the company will have to ensure uh, that the buyback is completed within one year of passing of such resolution by the company. So uh, quantum of buyback. Here, uh, we will have to uh, uh, notice that uh, board of directors can approve buyback only up to 10% of the company's paid up capital and free reserve. If at all the company intends to buy back more than 10% and less than 25%, in such cases, the shareholders will have to provide their approval via special resolution. And in any given financial year, a buyback cannot exceed 25% of the total paid up equity capital and free reserves of the company. Offer for buyback. So uh, the offer period for buyback uh, is a minimum of 15 days and it can go up to 30 days from the date of dispatch of offer letter in E-Form SH8. However, the a buyback offer period can be less than 15 days provided the shareholders pro consent and provide their approval to that. Uh, in, in case the number of shares or uh, say other securities offered by the shareholders is more than the intended buyback which the company proposes to do, in that case, the buyback shall be on a pro rata basis. Say, for example, the company proposes to buy back around 1 lakh shares from, the, uh, from its shareholders. However, uh, the 
shares offered by the shareholders is amounting to 1 lakh 20 thousand the company's bandwidth is only 1 lakh but the offer from the shareholders is 1 lakh 20 thousand in this case what happens is the company will uh, accept the shares on a pro rata basis say a shareholder has offered 1000 shares uh, to be bought back the company will accept 800 shares and the balance 200 shares will be rejected and a communication to this effect will have to be sent by the company to the shareholders stating that 800 shares are being bought back and 200 are being uh, rejected by the uh, company for uh, which is being offered for buy, uh, buyback by the shareholder then also we uh, the company should note that the company cannot buy back the shares which are subject to lock-in or uh, those securities which cannot be transferred, non-transferable securities or shares cannot be bought back by the company. So what do you mean by lock-in? Say uh, uh, any shares which are issued pursuant to employee stock option scheme or any sweat equity, here what happens is uh, these are governed by the uh, respective stock option scheme or the sweat equity uh, policy of the company. Here, uh, a few companies will uh, tend to give the lock-in period, say a uh, one year or three years, uh, three year period. And a uh, uh, few no, sweat equities are non-transferable. These cannot be uh, transferred by the uh, uh, key employees who have uh, received sweat equity shares. So in such cases, these employees cannot offer their shares to be bought back in this buyback offer. These are the exempted securities which cannot be bought back by the company. Moving on, uh, avenues of uh, buyback of securities. So from whom can a company buy back the shares? One, from the existing shareholders or the security holders on a proportionate basis, from the open market, or by purchasing the securities issued to employees uh, pursuant to a stock option scheme or a sweat equity uh, uh, policy. So now let's delve into the process of buyback of shares. First, the company will have to obtain a valuation certificate from the from a registered valuer, then conduct a board meeting for uh, authorizing the buyback of securities. This here, please note, uh, uh, the board of directors can approve and authorize the buyback only up to a percentage of 10% of the uh, total uh, paid up equity capital and free reserves. If at all, it, it proposes to buy back more than 10% and less than 25%, then they'll have to call for an EGM and take members approved via special resolution. In the board meeting, the uh, directors will have to note the valuation certificate they'll also have to declare solvency in form SH9. So declaration of solvency is mandatory. It shouldn't happen that the company distributes cash to its shareholders via buyback and uh, a month down the line or two months down the line, the company is insolvent and doesn't have monies to meet its uh, regular payments. So declaration of solvency is very important. And then the declaration uh, uh, by the board of directors in under rule 17, sub rule 1, sub rule M, uh, under company's share capital and debenture rules, uh, this, this declaration states that the company has not defaulted in any interest payments, term loan payments, or does not have any statutory dues. This is very important because unless uh, the company meets this criteria, which is one of the prerequisite conditions for buyback, they cannot initiate the process for, uh, commence the process for buyback. Uh, then uh, the approval of uh, offer letter for buyback in form SH8. Like I mentioned earlier, if at all the buyback is more than 10%, then the approval of members is required for this purpose. Approve the uh, uh, notice for the EGM and convene the EGM. Uh, the companies will have to ensure filing MGT14 for the board resolution, uh, authorizing the buyback. Uh, however, this uh, filing of MJT-14 is exempted for private limited companies. Listed and uh, unlisted public companies uh, will have to ensure uh, the compliance of uh, uh, filing of form MJT-14. Then uh, conduct the EGM and uh, obtain the shareholders approval via special resolution. File the e-form MGT-14 within 30 days of passing of the special resolution. Then file e-form SH-8, which is the offer letter for buyback with the registrar of companies. Once the letter of offer is filed, the company, if possible, immediately dispatch the letter of offer to all its shareholders. But this dispatch should not be later than 21 days from the date of filing of the uh, form SH-8 with the registrar of companies. The buyback period 
is open for a minimum of 15 days and it should uh, can be open up to a maximum period of 30 days, which shall be pre-decided by the board and approved by the shareholder as a, a wherever applicable. So once uh, the offer letters are received from the buyer, shareholders uh, offering for buyback of securities and shares, what happens is the company will have to verify these offer letters within 15 days uh, from the closure of the offer period. Okay, Within 15 days, the company will have to validate the offer letters and uh, uh, wherever possible, uh, uh, make the note and uh, uh, return back. Say, if, like I mentioned earlier, the company intends to uh, buy back only 1 lakh securities. If at all the shareholders uh, uh, offer 1 lakh 20,000 securities, in that case, the rejection communication should be sent to that additional 20,000 shares which have been offered by the shareholders. And here, we should note that the uh, wherever there is a over offer of the securities uh, to be bought back, uh, this buyback will be on a pro rata basis. If at all the company fails to send such communication within 21 days from the closure of the offer period, then it is deemed that all shares are being purchased by the repurchased by the company. Say in my earlier example, one of the shareholder offered 1000 shares. Okay, but the company is able to purchase to repurchase or buy back only 800 shares. So the company will have to send a communication for rejection of the 200 shares, which is not being bought back within 21 days from the closure of the offer period. If the company fails to send such communication within 21 days, then it is deemed by the shareholder that uh, the complete 1000 shares which are offered by the shareholder are being accepted for buyback and the company will be uh, crediting the money to its account for all the 1000 shares. This is one thing which companies will have to ensure whenever there is a over uh, uh, offer. Then once this is done, uh, conduct a board meeting once the company has validated or verified all the offer letters, uh, rolled out the rejection letters to the shareholders whose shares have not been accepted, the company will have to conduct a board meeting authorizing to open a separate bank account for uh, transferring the funds for buyback of securities. Then uh, uh, extinguishment of share certificates, whoever is holding shares in the physical format and approval to make payments to those share shareholders or security holders whose securities have been accepted. Here, uh, uh, the company will have to also, uh, uh, listed entities will have to ensure that uh, what happens is in listed entities, uh, there will be an escrow account. So those, uh, like we mentioned earlier, we will not be deliberating on the listed compliances. Uh, a separate bank account has to be opened for the purpose of depositing like we deliberated earlier. Uh, then, within uh, seven days of the closure of the offer period, the cash consideration needs to be paid to the uh, shareholders whose uh, shares have been accepted and uh, accepted to be bought back. Then, return of share certificates should, should be made within seven days of closure of offer, uh, wherein the shares have not been accepted. Okay. Then, uh, the company will have to file e-form SH-11 uh, which uh, which gives the uh, uh, which is the return of buyback, uh, giving the compliance or the completion of buy buyback of securities, along with form SH15, which is the certificate of compliance with the provisions of uh, buyback. So the company will have to file form SH11 within 30 days of completion of buyback formalities. So uh, coming to the post buyback compliances. Uh, within uh, seven days of uh, uh, closure of the offer letter or within seven days of uh, uh, completion of the buyback period, the company will have to ensure that the physical share certificates are destroyed and uh, the entries are made into uh, Form SH-10, which is the register of buyback. Then a return of buyback should be filed, like we mentioned earlier and with the, uh, in Form SH-11. Then... A company cannot make any rights issue in the next uh, six months for the uh, same kind of securities or any further issue for uh, same kind or other securities for the next six months. Okay. However, uh, there is an exception where a bonus issue or an issue of securities in discharge of subsisting, uh, subsisting obligations can be made. So what do you mean by uh, subsisting obligations? It could be, uh, uh, say, there the company has uh, convertible securities or preference shares or debentures, which is due for conversion in the next three months. 
in that case this is an exception wherein the company can go ahead and convert the debentures to equity or convert the preference shares to uh, equity or it could so happen that uh, one of the shareholders uh, one of the employees uh, esops are vested and he would like to exercise as option and convert those uh, options into shares so this the these are the uh, uh, subsisting obligations which are exempted Okay, so what happens is uh, after buyback, uh, the reserves of the company would come down. In such cases, the an uh, equivalent amount of buyback should be transferred to the uh, share capital uh, uh, redemption reserve account, and uh, this uh, CRR account will be utilized by the company for paying up the unissued shares of the company issued to the members. Uh, which are fully paid bonus shares and this can't be used for any other purpose. If at all the company uses the capital redemption reserve account for any other purpose other than uh, for issue of fully paid uh, 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 paying up the unissued shares, then it would amount to reduction of share capital and provisions of section 66 would apply in this case. So, uh, taxation aspects, uh, my colleague uh, C.A. Chandan would uh, uh, run you through the taxation aspects of buyback. Chandan, over to you. Thank you, Shalini. It was a nice explanation about the buyback of shares. Uh, coming to the taxation aspects with respect to buyback of shares, uh, we, it is imperative to understand on our part that generally the buyback would be done on a premium when compared to the market price. And uh, buyback was also one of the one of the ways that uh, companies used to follow to avoid dividend distribution tax because earlier Indian companies, whenever they wanted to issue dividend or whenever they wanted to declare dividend, there was a tax called dividend distribution tax, which was a, a liability or a compliance obligation on the part of companies. So instead of uh, issuing dividend, they would have gone for buyback at a premium price and they would have issued the similar kind of shares to the same uh, shareholders. This used to be followed back then uh, in the Indian markets. So now what the Income Tax Act has put up a condition is during the buyback of shares, it is not the shareholders who will be taxed. It is not the shareholders who will be taxed. Instead, the company will be taxed on the buyback of shares. It is the company who will be uh, taxed on the buyback of, buyback of shares under section 115QA. Uh, that is the section that is uh, ruling with respect to the buyback of shares. Uh, so, uh, but it is quite interesting to understand that uh, now earlier the dividend was not taxed in the hands of shareholders. The, the dividends paid by the domestic companies were always exempt in the hands of the Indian shareholders. But now we have a specific section for taxation of dividends as well. But still, the income tax department has not made any changes with respect to the section wherein buyback tax has to be borne by the company. So we'll now understand how the buyback would be taxed as per the Income Tax Act 1961. Buyback of shares are taxed at the time of buyback by the company. In a sense, the company has to pay tax instead of the shareholder. The company has to pay tax at the rate of 23.296. The breakup of this 23.296 is 20% of the base tax plus 12% surcharge, plus 4% education tax. All round, it comes to 23.296% as buyback tax. Now, it is also very important for us to understand on what value this 23.296% would be calculated. It is a very simple calculation wherein what would be the buyback price, what would be the issue price. The difference between of this price would be capital gain as per for each share multiplied with number of shares would be total number of capital gain, the total value of capital gain. That is in a sense buyback price minus issue price into number of shares would be the value that would be assessed for calculation of buyback tax. And it is also imperative to note that the set amount of tax has to be deposited within 14 days of the buyback date. That is suppose if the company is making a buyback, uh, the, if the company has brought back certain shares on April 15, Within April 29, the amount has to be deposited with the income tax department. If, if there is any delay, the interest would be charged at the rate of 18% per annum. And once the buyback is taxed in the hands of companies, there is no tax liability in the hands of shareholders as per section 1030 That is, this kind of capital gain transaction that arises for shareholders is exempt in the hands of shareholders under section 10, subsection 34 a
i guess uh, it is clear to the participants of the webinar so that's it from the taxation aspect thanks chandan thank you thank you thanks a lot chandan thank you sir uh, first case law is on uh, uh, capgemini india private limited here uh, this is a case law under the 1956 act so the company uh, uh, had offered uh, had uh, initiated a buyback process under section 391 uh, read with sections 100 uh, 100 to 103 of 1956 act instead of section 77a uh, and it was held that uh, this uh, uh, buyback is only uh, to evade tax liability and to just distribute the income it was ruled by the high court that uh, uh, the company is free to choose between 391 as a part of your merger or amalgamation, which is a single window clearance scheme, the company will not have to go for uh, uh, multiple approvals. It is up to the company to decide uh, on under which route they want to buy back the shares. It could be either under uh, the merger route or as a separate uh, 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 corporate action item altogether. This is what the High Court uh, had held here. Under... Uh, 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 coming to the next uh, section, uh, uh, Income Tax Act, it was held that the profit arising of out of uh, buyback schemes should be taxed under the uh, head of capital gains. Uh, if the taxpayer if the taxpayer was not liable uh, liable to deduct uh, tax as per provisions of section 195 it could not be held as ta taxpayer in default under section 201 this is one inter interesting case law wherein uh, capgemini india both companies act provisions as well as the taxation aspects have been covered in this case law which is a good read then coming to the next case law, which is Goldman Sachs uh, India Securities Limited. Here, Goldman Sachs India Securities had only two shareholders. One was Goldman Sachs Mauritius and the other one is a single individual. Uh, the buyback was at a premium, okay? Uh, premium of uh, uh, 36 uh, rupees 79 paise per equity share. And uh, uh, the uh, assessing officer held that the accumulated profits the excess pay, uh, the premium paid out of the accumulated profits is uh, tax uh, is in the form of dividend, okay, uh, disguised as a buyback, and the company is liable to pay uh, dividend distribution tax. And it was ruled that uh, uh, the company is liable to pay dividend distribution tax and was charged a simple interest on this. So, uh, sir, we can take questions on uh, buyback now. Yeah. For 10% and 20% buyback, the period of one year is for the financial year or the actual year? Financial year. 66C says the buyback is 25% or less the aggregate of the paid of capital and the free reserves of the company. That is true. That is what you explained, I think so. Right. Actions the buyback from the company investor perspective when it is not through tender route or from the open market. Tender route and open market is being the SEBI LODR regulation. We are talk, not talking, but he is talking about the uh, taxation aspect. Chandra, would you like to answer this question if you are there? Can, can you please repeat the question, sir? Taxation of buyback from the company and the investor perspective when it's not through the tender route or from the open market. Yes, exactly. It is It is always important to note that the buyback provisions that is under section 115QA is applicable for those unlisted companies. Because okay. if for listed companies, the shares would have exchanged multiple hands. So yeah. it is very difficult for someone, for companies to have a track on what would be the purchase price. So if the if buyback happens on the listed market, it will be on the, it will be on the hands of shareholder as a capital gain based on the holding period. But if it is through unlisted route and that is tender route, it will be on the company's part. That is under section 115QA for 23.296%. Is valuation compulsory? Yes, it is compulsory. That is what Shalini categorically said, actually. Should the total paid up equity and free reserve is as per the latest audited financial? Yes, it is as per the last available audited financial statements. Valuation is a must. Yeah, that is true. If the 
offer of the buyback, certain shareholder may not opt for the buyback. Can those shareholders relinquish this offer in favor of other shareholders who opt for the buyback? Rohit? Can you repeat what it is? In the, um, in the offer of the buyback, certain shareholders may not opt for the buyback. Can those shareholders relinquish this offer in favor of the other shareholder who opt for buyback? That is, I don't want to give the buyback, but instead of me, can you surrender? I don't so, think that is possible. I haven't honestly handled the buyback process, but the, yeah. the, the, the process that Shalini explained, which I learned now while she was explaining, buyback is yeah. like a participation. It's it's available. It, this, this is an offer which is available to all shareholders. Those who want to offer their shares for buyback will participate. Those who don't will not. So those who don't are in a way surrendering in favor of those who are participating. To that extent, the acceptance ratio will improve. Okay. Then the Section 8 company can bear a bonus to its employees and what is the employee is also a member. Class 52 of the form INC 13 provide under the rule 19.2 of the company's incorporation rules provided that no profits of the profit other income property offer set shall be paid transferred directly or indirectly by way of the dividend bonus or otherwise by way of the profit or person who at any time etc have been members of the company or to this anyone or... Mr. Yeah. Mala, this was earlier question that section 8 company whether the bonus can be given and, and it was answered. No, no, he's saying is the employee okay. and as well as the member that is the person he is raising I believe. Ma'am, an employee is also a member of the company. In such case, can a Section 8 company issue bonus shares to the employees? The question. Employee. Can he be can he be issued with the capacity of the employee, although he be a member? So bonus shares inherently is a is a reward to the shareholders, not to the employees. ESOP is a reward to the employees. Uh, the person becomes entitled to bonus shares because he's a shareholder. And not because he's an employee. So uh, Sir, this question is with respect to section. Sorry to interrupt. This question is with respect to section eight companies, wherein we told section eight companies cannot issue bonus shares, but however, they would issue bonus uh, shares to the employees under the ESOP scheme, whoever has got the shares under ESOP scheme. So in that line, uh, this but, question uh, is per se, asked. per se, per se, bonus shares will be to employee even only if the company can issue bonus shares. No. Correct. Correct. company cannot issue bonuses. We answered that and somebody has commented that uh, we have not discussed. A friend, the, question, the answer was very elaborate. So we have not said. It was mentioned that Section 8 company has to utilize its dividend uh, profit only for the, uh, and, you know, furtherance of objects and directly okay. undertaking that they will not uh, use this profit or income for any direct or in benefit given to member directly or indirectly, including dividend or bonus. So it is clearly clear. Right. So we discussed it. Somebody commented why we did not discuss. Okay. Yeah. We have taken this. The buyback is 25% or less or aggregate of paid up and free reserve. Proviso say in respect of buyback equity share in any financial year, the reference to 25%. In this clause shall be construed with respect to its total paid up equity capital in that financial year. Provision section appears to be contra contradictory. Basically, it says 25% of aggregate of paid up capital and free reserves. Free reserve of that financial year. And they are telling otherwise it is just say free reserve of the company. So, Mr. Rohit, can you elaborate that what is that relevance that Aggregate of paid up capital and free reserves. So, okay. I think what I, again, learn from uh, Shalini and it's a fresh of the oven knowledge. Uh, I may be wrong. Uh, but what I understand, what she explained is you have to calculate the permissible buyback limit in two ways. One is how many number of shares can be bought back, which is 20, which cannot be more than 25% uh, 
or 10% depending on the board approval or the shareholder approval. And the amount that you can use for the buyback is linked to the reserve amount. So I think there are two different criteria that one need to comply. It has to be lesser of the three conditions. You can't exceed. So you have enormous amount of money. Your 25% of capital and freezer amount allows you to say buy back entire capital. You can't do that because it has, it cannot exceed 25% in terms of number of shares. And maybe Shalini, if you go back to the slide, that will come out clearly. Yeah, one minute. So here, uh, the question is, uh, ma'am, 68C says total paid up capital and free reserves. Whereas the provision says 20 uh, uh, paid up equity capital and free reserves. Here, 68C says total paid up capital. Total paid up capital will also inc include your preference shares. Okay. The provision says only equity and free reserves. So what uh, the general practice is, go with the lower uh, lower amount like uh, Rohit sir said, go with only equity and free reserves wherein you do not exceed 25% in any financial year. If at all you consider uh, preference capital, the chances of you exceeding 25% is higher and thereby you would be violating the provision in uh, two six, uh, section 68C. So here we have taken up only the equity. Uh, I, I will elaborate what is proviso is selling to clarify okay. because it is telling 25% limit. So when in respect, they are clarifying in proviso, in respect of buyback of equity share in any financial year, that reference of 25% shall be construed in respect to its total paid up equity in that financial year. So you have to refer to your paid up capital of that financial year only, not of other financial year. So they are clarifying if you are deciding to buy back the financial, uh, sorry, equity, you refer your total paid up equity capital of that relevant financial year. Okay, that is the, okay. Now company paid the loan with delay and regularized the loan. Can this company make, a buyback. So the loan is repaid or with the delay. Yes, yes, this is possible, ma'am. Okay. Can buyback of shares to be done at face value in case of private limited company? Valuation is mandatory. If the valuation comes down below face value, also then uh, uh... minimum face value. Hmm. Uh, assuming a company has 1 lakh equity shares of 10 each, aggregating to 10 lakh and free reserve of 90 lakh, thus aggregating to 100 lakhs, the company can buy back only up to 25,000 equity shares in financial year at total buyback value not exceeding 25 lakh. Or can the company can buy back, say, more than 25,000 shares, say, 30,000 shares? as long as total aggregate of buyback value is less than 25 lakh. So is it 25% of the equity or the value? 25% of equity and free reserves. You have yeah. to consider both. Because here, the condition is very clear. 25% of equity capital and free reserves. So what he is telling is that is that if there is the buyback value not exceeding 25 lakhs, which is 25. So whether, I'll repeat the question. Company has 1 lakh equity shares of rupees 10 each, which aggregate to 10 lakh. So when you are referring 25%, you are referring 25% to the number of equity shares or 25% of the value of equity shares. Value, value. Exactly, that was the question. So, and that's why it referred to financial. Then, if authorized capital was 100 and buyback of 25% was done two years back, now authorized capital is 75. So, 25% limit will apply to 100 or 75 for next buyback. To 75, it is written that paid up. I'm here. 
the pay, they'll have to see on paid up capital here yeah, the person is mentioning authorized capital ah yeah paid up <laughs> yeah paid up capital so is the criteria paid up, uh, so paid up capital yes yes we will have to read it as paid up issue price is the price at which the company had issued or at which the shareholder has bought in case of purchase from open market Issue price is the price at which the company issued the shares or at which the shareholders has bought in from the open market. I think this is uh, this is a question from the taxation aspect, wherein Chandan had given the formula for uh, uh, computing the uh, uh, tax on yes. Yes, I have already given the I had already given the formula. The formula is simple. It is at which the buyback is being taken care of. That is the buyback price minus the issue price. It is also very important to note that in listed securities, it is very uh, difficult to find out the issue price because it would have exchanged multiple hands. So that's the reason this whole concept of this 23.296 percentage tax for corporates would be applicable only in case of unlisted securities where buyback is happening. In case of listed securities, it will it is as simple as capital gain taxation wherein we calculate the holding period and calculate the amount of tax. Yeah, thank you. Mr. Uh, Anirban has also asked the question, is the tax on buyback is same for listed as well as unlisted company? You already answered. What is the yes. list? Now, what happens when the... Next, thanks, Chandan. What happens when the issue price is different, say partly shares are issued at a premium or at par? That is issue price. We have said that... Uh, the same thing, Chandan. What happens? The issue price is different. Say partly shares. It, it, it is simple, ma'am. If it is issued at face value, the face value which we consider to be issue price, and if it is issued at premium, the issue, the premium amount would be the total amount whichever is paid will be considered to be issue price. It does not make a difference whether we are issuing shares at discount or whether we share whether we are issuing shares at premium. The only thing we need to note is what is the amount that is actually paid by the shareholders during purchase of shares. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Next question. Debt free company having enough paid up capital and free reserves. Capital is 1 lakh and free reserve is 10 crore. Now company can buy back more than 25% of equity shares in a single time at a face value of shares. <laughs> if the buyback done in a face value, what would be the tax impact? If the buyback is done on face value, then there is no tax impact because if it is on face value and if, we, if they do it on face value, generally it does not happen because generally buyback happens only on premium or else the people won't. Buyback is an offer that a company gives. It is not a mandatory thing that yeah. a company can pose on. So generally it happens only yeah. on premium. Yeah. Yes. Uh, then how issue price for buyback tax to be computed that you are done in listed company? Does section 1034A apply to private unlisted company? It applies only for private unlisted companies and not private listed companies. Once it is listed companies, it does not become a private company, obviously. Only for unlisted companies, uh, the section 1034A is applicable. Okay. Uh, under which provision we need to obtain valuation certificate from registered valuer? Section 68. Because you will have to arrive at the price for buyback of each security. That can be done only on a uh, valuation. Priyanka Tucker. Buyback offers to shareholders with different classes of equity shares. If the company has issued two different classes of equity shares, is it mandatory to extend the buyback offer to all shareholders irrespective of the class of shares they hold? What if the other class is part of SOC? Additionally, if there are any specific regulation or guidelines regarding buyback process for companies with multiple classes of equity shares, please enlighten on this. So if there are two classes of shares, then buyback should be made to all classes compulsory or there can be to one class and another class separately. Ma'am, it can be done for one, one class only. Whichever class the, it is up to the, it's at the discretion of the uh, shareholders. Yeah, but uh, one class should with, be offered to all one class. Shareholders. All the shareholders of one no, class. No, no, no. See, Yes. If one class is offered, the buyback will be applicable. That class only, it will not be automatically mm. go for the other yeah. classes. Yeah. Class, correct, correct. 
And Be uh, because the board decide which class of the shareholder will be asked for the buyback, that class all shareholder will be applicable. Yeah. See, what if the other class is part of an SO? Additionally, there is specific regulation or guidelines regarding buyback process for companies with multiple class. And basically, the class, similar rights uh, shareholders are uh, to be offered the uh, same rights. So, buyback is also right of shareholders. So, you have to treat the shareholders equally. And that's why you have to offer the shares of the same class, offer of buyback. Because their rights should not, there should not be discrimination of rights by the company. And accordingly, they have to offer to all shareholders of particular class. So is the computation of debt equity two is to one ratio post buyback based on the standalone or consolidated financial? Standalone. Is there any valuation method prescribed under companies that for valuation of buyback? Method is not uh, prescribed. Generally, uh, uh, discounted cash flow method or the NAVA is what was being followed. Uh, Chandan, it is for you. Tax implication on buyback amount and treatment of bonuses. I understand that tax on buyback is 23.296% of the amount paid to the shareholders minus the issue price of the shares. In cases where some shares were allotted as bonus shares, how should we calculate the issue price for tax purposes? Is there a different tax treatment for shares issued as bonuses? And if so, what is the procedure for determining the applicable tax? It is uh, again the same thing. Whenever there is an issue of bonus shares, we already have understood that for bonus shares, there is no any uh, price that is being paid by the shareholder. So at that case, for, if at all there are any shares that is brought back which are issued as a part of bonus scheme, then the issue price would be zero. Then the issue price would become zero and the tax and the whole buyback price would be considered to be capital gain and the same value would be assessed for tax. Either if it yeah, is listed is what, or if it is unlisted. Yeah, that is what you said actually. But another thing you also mentioned about that uh, bonus stripping also the nine months holding period. Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you, Chandan. Buyback of shares is capital distribution. Why assessing officer as treated as dividend? And Goldman case, we will not able to comment here that uh, we have referred the decided cases. Ms. Rajeshri has written, no, no, we'll give the chance. Mr. Okay, Mr. Rohit Basse has been... Any surplus <laughs> amount is actually distributed shareholder. There is a provision in their income tax. It will be actually treated as a deemed dividend. That okay. will attract automatically. Yeah. The company Z does not mandate valuation for buyback, unlike Section 62, Section 42, private placement. As long as board can justify the price, please clarify where the valuation is mandated under company Z. Yeah, then without, uh, without valuation, we cannot justify the. No, 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 no. Uh, that is not the reason. Where the provision is there, Shalini, in the company Z? Yes. Okay, okay. Valuation okay. is compulsory. Like private placement, mm -hmm. there is a compulsion. That provision, yes. I think it is not there. Very clearly, the, that compulsory it is required. It is not there. Thank you for uh, giving attention, Mr. Murthu. Uh, Ms. R.P. State Proviso says that 25% uh, of the total paid up equity means total buyback cannot exceed 25% of equity share capital in any financial year. Yes, your understanding is correct. And equity Ms. share Arpi, capital plus free reserves. Yeah. yeah. And Ms. R.P., your point about ordinary resolution is correct. The provision of the Companies Act says only shareholders approval. It does not say special resolution. So uh, we agree that your con uh, contention, your stand was correct. It is provides only shareholders approval. It doesn't say anything. So it is ordinary resolution under companies. And thanks for your attention. Apologize for the inconvenience. Mr. In case of buyback taxation, how to calculate the purchase price and number of shares in case of bonus shares issues? 
Chandan? Uh, we answered this previously. It is same. I mean, the issue price is exactly the price that we have already paid. Okay. It is already collected from the shareholders. Yes. In case okay. of bonuses, it becomes zero. Yeah. Uh, again, the question on valuation as per Rule 11 UA of Income Tax or Companies Act as valuation rules different under both. Now we are telling the valuation is not compulsory as there is no specific concern. In buyback, uh, company has to pay tax on the buyback amount. Should the tax payable should be included in selling 25% of the paid up set capital and free reserves? Chandan? That is the person is asking grossing up the tax. I think I am unable to hear you, sir. Can you please repeat again? He said. If the buyback company has to pay the tax on the buyback amount, yes. should the tax payable should be included in the ceiling of 25% of the paid up capital and free reserves? Uh, tax liability would be calculated only after the buyback, uh, only after the buyback takes place. So that does not form part of the free reserves or capital for the calculation of buyback amount. Yeah, that means he is talking about the grossing up of the things and the tax amount also within that 25%. Which no, is not no. the case, correct? No, no, no. That is not the case. That is not the case. Company can buy back more than 25% of the equity share in a single time, having enough reserves. No, you cannot do it in a financial year. It is restricted only 25%. You have to wait for the next financial year then. And not only that, that gap period is that 12-month period. Correct, no, Shalini? Yes, sir. Is there any specific guidelines for the SC for valuation of the 2023? There is a specific guidelines for the valuation 2023. Somebody says, actually, if the shares are issued at the premium, say 200 rupees per share, 10 rupees plus 190 premium, issued for the tax purposes would be rupees 10 or rupees 200, in our understanding, it is to be rupees 200. Please confirm. Yeah, it will be 200 is the cost price. When bonus are allotted to the shareholder, they are put into the basket of that class of the shares, both in the case, the company and the shareholder, of the shareholders individually. Purchase price of the original share held by the shareholder are distributed over the whole holding. Company or shareholder will not be maintaining the identity of the bonus share. Am I correct? Sorry, from which perspective is this question asked? Seems when like a he is asking yeah. about he is asking about the bonus share. He says when bonus shares are allotted to a shareholder, they are put in the basket out of that class shares, both in the case of the company and the shareholders individually. Purchase price of the original share held by the shareholder are distributed over the whole holding. Company or shareholder will not be maintaining the identity of the bonus share. Am I correct? Sorry, it doesn't seem like a company law question. It seems more like a tax question from because under company law, the bonus issue is to an individual shareholder in the same ratio. So there's no bucket or basket. You can always go and see the date on which the bonus shares are credited. The purchase price is also available. If at all you are holding on a DMAT share, DMAT format, uh, under your uh, DMAT account, you can see from uh, which date you are holding and the issue price is also visible. So uh, this can be easily bifurcated as far as the shares are in DMAT form. Yeah, is valuation uh, almost everything is yeah almost everything in the DMAT form only now. Correct. Because except that uh, exempted category, it is everything mm -hmm. in the DMAT form only. Is valuation not compulsory even if you have NRA shareholders? NRA shareholders, yes, I wanted to mention that, that NRA shareholders, of course, RBI will ask that, right, and valuation is compulsory for everything, every transaction, when RBI comes into picture, because authorized dealer is in the picture, yeah. Buyback for 10%, it's 12 months and 25% financial, both are different? No, both are same. Both are same, in, because in the, the your... gap is actually, yeah. Yes. No, no, I, uh, that explained that in the period of 12 months, that 10% limit is there. 
and that 25 percent is uh, pertaining to the financial financial for the company law the income tax question sir okay if the buyback say 100 and the buyback tax is 23 lakhs so if the buyback is 100 lakhs and the buyback tax is 23 lakhs 123 lakhs should be less than 25 percent of the puc of the free reserves it means amount spent in the buyback 25 percent in which buyback tax is to be considered chandan i think we need your help i think this question Sir, sir, they are again grossing up the tax here. I understand that the notion behind asking these questions is grossing up the taxation because that is ultimately the whole cost of capital for buyback. That is the whole yeah. cost to company when it when it considers for a process called buyback. But at the end, we have to note as per the Companies Act, it tells it is only buyback amount which is to be considered for that pre reserves calculation and not the tax aspect. That is all I think so. Yes. So we are done with. So now we can see actually who's our is in the hand. We can ask them to speak. Shalini, I think you can close the presentation, I believe. Yes, sir. One minute. Somebody has given the valuation root site here, actually, the link which is available here. Yeah. Thanks, Rajesh. Uh, basically, yes. Uh, that valuation we are telling repeatedly that there is no specific provision, but as Shalini mentioned, that where how you justify the valuation board can. The yeah, valuation will be recorded according to. Yeah. Me also, uh, so that's why. Because without the valuation, I think valuation will be recorded. Yeah. Uh, I think we have covered everything. All questions. Yeah. 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 Uh. So, if anyone wants to speak, then we'll allow. Yeah, if someone wants to ask the question, they can raise their hands. Or discuss rather than questions are already. Yeah. Uh... Dipti, there is somebody is asking, can you please once again explain the exemption of 10% and 25%? Example of 10%, 25%. Yeah, that 10% limit has to be applicable with the period of 12 months. It can start from, see, today you are done by that, that 10% limit is for 10 months. Correct me, both the panelists. And if 25% is for that financial year, you have paid up capital, that 25% limit is there. Correct, Salini? Yeah, you're right. Correct. You're absolutely right. It is a period of 12 months and here as on the financial year date. That is the difference. Yeah, yeah uh, who is? Uh... I think uh, Anand Kumar has raised the hand. Yeah, Mr. Anand. Yes, Anand Kumar, you can speak. You can unmute yourself and you can speak. Anand Kumar? You are, talk you are permitted to talk, unmute and speak. Yeah. Is there it? Cap gain or loss for a company buying the shares compared to the ma market rate? Sorry? No. Is there any gain or loss to the company for buying its own shares in comparison to the market rate? No, I'm not getting it exactly. Market rate and buying the share, what do you mean actually? Yeah, buying buying the share uh, by the company is at a fixed price, sir. Okay. But, but the market rate can vary. It can be more or less than what it is being offered. I mean, the price being offered by the company. Sir, to interrupt, sorry, can I take this question? Yeah, yeah. please, sir. Yes. Uh, generally, what happens is, uh, generally, whenever there's a buyback, it is always for a premium. So... On a notional note, if you consider it would be loss for a company only considering this share transaction, but it is too imperative to note that this buyback would be done at certain situations so as to reduce their share capital. So they don't they don't mind when vending out much more, much more premium money than what the market is exactly able to deliver. That is when people would be ready to offer their shares for buyback. So ultimately, if we see it is just the capital that it is just the reserves that they are converting or reduction in the capital. It is nothing but nothing loss or nothing gain. It is the company is not in a situation of both loss or gain. 
as a shalini actually puts in the beginning it yeah. is one way of the capital reduction without undergoing any other procedural aspect except of one thing second thing is again it is the capital restructuring that is one in the market we have seen one of the recent example what we have seen is bajaj auto when it was selling around 8000 rupees or something the share price they have offered around 10000 rupees in fact the, the tender by the people were much more than that the people who surrendered about 50 share their share accepted was only six shares proportionate basis that was the case actually yeah uh, so, we'll take uh, mr rajesh sri next yeah first of all i would say uh, i would be apologizing to ditti ma'am for differing with, with opinion that the there is no specific rule of valuation of in regarding the buyback but ma'am now in 2022 and 2023 calcutta high court and supreme court had made some specific rules that their the valuation is mandatory and i have just shared the link on the ch chat box where the, the, there is a sebi regulation also no the listed company no, it is there, there is a government yeah uh, this companies have specific provision we were discussing because our uh, webinar was pertaining to companies act so there is no specific provision in the company that we have mentioned uh, but thanks a lot for registry for your input i again apologize to you ma'am for differing in in opinion so no no we are also telling that it is required valuation but that specific provision so what was the question where it is mentioned in the act or rules and of the company. act that that is a question that was the question ma'am if you uh, kindly go to the link you will see the sebi has uh, uh, given the guidelines and where they are mentioned some sections of the companies act also uh, okay we'll go through that but uh, as regards salodia sebi is applic uh, listed something we will take that the link is shared on the chat box in sarpi so we will go through that okay thanks mr rajesh thank you ma'am yeah mr ashok you can speak please i just wanted to know in buyback of share is com if company is taken taking care for capital for capital gain tax or taxation part so individual shareholder who sold the share under buyback need not pay any capital gain tax or anything he is exempted mr bala you are on mute hello yeah mr bala you are on mute shareholder uh, yes yes yeah, yeah. So shareholder need not pay the tax if, if he is. If he doesn't pay any tax because the tax is end. Oh, okay, even if he has capital gain tax because he purchased at a lower price and he sold at the buyback price. No, so no, there no, is no, a no, cap. No, not at all. No, not at all. Not at all. Because in case of the buyback, he doesn't pay any tax. It is paid by the company. That's it. Oh, okay. That is why okay. it is. That is why it is advantageous to the shareholders in case right, of the sir. buyback. So he is getting more than market price also, and also tax benefit also. Correct, correct. You are right. Oh, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Okay, I think we have uh, everyone has spoken. Now we can close this session. Thanks everyone for your time, contribution, participation. Uh, Mr. Rajasri, link is asked again and again. Please put it. And. Thanks everyone. Thanks Mr. Rohit for your inputs on practical aspect. You pointed all the uh, practical issues. Thanks a lot for your time. Thanks for wonderful uh, contribution. Thanks everyone. Thanks Mr. Mala. Thanks Salini for your presentation and Mr. The opportunity, ma'am. Thanks, Thanks Rohit. Uh, Rohit, Thank I personally, uh, Rohit, I would like to personally once again express my sincere thanks to you. My because you brought out many issues like, you know, RBI, yeah. practical handling, and the fractional issue, etc., and all the things. It's are very nitty-gritties of these issues. Very thankful to you. I think it is definitely beneficial to all of us. Yeah, it's not out of experience. Good presentation. Right? Nicely, you have processed. You have put everything nicely. Appropriate sections, appropriate headings, etc. Very nice. It's done. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you.
have a good weekend we meet in once again at another weekend thank yeah, you yeah and all mumbaikas go for voting it is voting day for monday already done uh, mumbai ka hai our time monday. is over our time is over <laughs> okay thank you thank you everyone thank you thank you